Do you ever find that no matter what you earn at the end of each month, you're always waiting for that next payday, you're always spent up, and you're always absolutely skint at the end of the month? If that's you, that's not uncommon. I've found myself in that predicament before, so I've spent a bit of time focusing on how the best way to get around it, how to budget, and how to make sure each month you're saving adequately, you've got enough money to go out, do things that you want to socially, and get through the month with a little bit left to spare. Let's do this. Hi everybody, Adam Arif here from Beyond Educated, a channel dedicated to health, productivity and well-being. So the main story behind this is that recently I've been away on a lot of holidays. Those holidays have cost me a considerable amount of money, probably more than I should have spent, but I really wanted to go on the holidays and I'm glad I did. What it meant was that I was absolutely skin. I don't have no money, see? So it was really stressing me out at one point and the only way that I could deal with it in my mind is to get it all down on a spreadsheet and I created a template and managed my finances and managed to get myself back on track. The only way really you're effectively going to manage your money is if you track it all and keep it logged down. Now that could be in a notebook, it could be on an Excel spreadsheet and I recommend you using the document that I'm going to attach and link up to put your income in, put your figures in and see actually if you're left with a surplus or a deficit at the end of the month. The reality is if you're left with a deficit at the end of the month, you're going to have to cut back on your spending or increase your income but you can only realise what the cost implications are going to be for you once you've punched your numbers into the actual spreadsheet and budget. I'm going to go through five tips very quickly on things that I did that can help improve your cash flow, your spending and make sure that you're left with a few pennies at the end of the month. First point I'm going to make, tip number one, is to make sure that no matter what, take out one tenth of your salary every month and make sure that that goes into some savings. One of the things that you'll realise is you will spend according to what you earn. So if you've got it in the bank, you'll spend it. But actually, if you take it out straight away at the start of the month, you'll find that you'll live and deal with the amount of money that you're going to get. Tip number two is create a contingency fund. So each month, you need to create a separate account. If you're not very good at keeping a contingency fund that you can't tap into, then I recommend that you pass it over to a family member or a friend and they keep it, someone you trust for safeguarding so that if you do need it for a replacement for car tyres or unexpected bills or your oven goes or something like that, then you can replace it and fix it without additional burden for you in the month. Tip number three, when it comes to managing your money, one of the biggest drains is your food, particularly if you're going out every lunchtime and spending five, ten pounds at Tesco's. You don't need to be a great mathematician to work out that if you're spending £10 a day on your lunch, you're spending £300 on food a month, and then you're buying your shopping additionally, and it's going to cost you a considerable amount of money. If you adequately prepare your food before, take salmon, uh, cook it the night before, rice, chicken, whatever that is, get yourself a freezer pack and get yourself a, a lunch box or whatever you want to have. Put your food in there. Not only will you save a bit of money, but I'm sure you'll be a little bit healthier in the long run as well. Tip number four, the second biggest drain on your money, unfortunately, is something that we all love to do, and that's go out and have the occasional drink, or when I say occasional, probably a lot of drinks. If that's the case and you're a big drinker, there's two ways you can do this. Either be sensible with your money in terms of going out and allocating a budget that you can spend on the evening, but if you can't do that, what you will need to do is just go out and drive for a couple of nights. Actually, the first few times, it can be a little bit difficult to kind of get used to going out on your own and not drinking but you tend to find you're healthier you're more productive at the weekends and you're saving money in the long run so I'm not saying completely cut out drink you might not want to do that but a few nights go out drive and although yeah you might say it's a little bit boring what you will find is is that you save a considerable amount of money in the long run tip number five watch what you are buying the reality is that we would all love to buy more things than we can actually afford to buy. So if you set up a spreadsheet, for example, or write yourself a list of things that you're going to purchase in the month, as long as they're not extortion amounts that completely outstrip your net earnings, make sure you are treating yourself, but understand that you need to be disciplined. Discipline with your money means that although you'd like something in the month, you might have to sacrifice it and wait another month or another two months and in the long run, you'll find that your general financial health and stability is much better. And also, it gives you a greater peace of mind, meaning that actually, you're not stressing about money at the end of the month. If you found this information useful and would like more hints, tips and tricks on health, productivity and well-being, 
make sure that you subscribe to the channel, check out some of the videos, uh, post your comments in the link below. I'm always keen to listen to your ideas and comments, what you think, how do you manage your money, how do you effectively budget each month, how much do you spend on food. Post your comments in the section below. I look forward to reading them. I'll make sure I get back to you on the comments. And as ever, guys, stay educated. Okay guys, so here we have it. It might look relatively complicated at first, but it's quite straightforward. In this column here, you're just going to put what you've got left in your current account. This plan is for five months to end up paying off all your debts. And what you're going to do is put your income in here, slot down any money that you've got to pay off in your credit cards, slot in your bills, and it's pretty self-explanatory the way it works itself through. You've got some money here going out to savings. You've got a contingency fund for if anything goes wrong with your boiler or something like that. Your mortgage and rent payments just need changing as applicable and then you've got your living expenses. Now this is an important one because it will adjust and move each month. It probably won't be exactly £500 or £700 for example if it was a bigger month. So what you need to do is adjust and make sure that your expenses that you're incurring are reflective of what you can actually afford and you need to be quite strict with that and stick to it. You've again got a holiday fund that needs to go somewhere separately, keep with another uh, family member or someone else if you can't be strict with yourself and keep to that. What I suggest you do each month as you've paid off a certain debt is go through and highlight them in a certain colour once you've paid them. And that will eventually, what I find, leave you with this amount. And then what you can do is each month you can document any additional income and you can document also the living expenses that you're going to incur. So if at the minute, for example, you were at £300, then you know that that's what you've got left for the month and you can budget it tightly. Now down here, you've got a negative cash flow which means that you're going to need to borrow the money from somewhere else. So you're going to have to distribute this big credit card payment that you've got across other months. So you might want to, example, just split that across the other month, like £150. And that will give you a positive cash flow and then eventually pay that off. So you will realise that you actually do have enough money to pay off your debt. Fill this in, make sure that you're tracking your finances and you will tick it off each month and find that you'll get yourself in a much better position and get into the habit of tracking this and keeping on top of the document every month.